Welcome back, you guys. Last video, we were working on the race truck where, in case you missed it, if you did, go check the video out. But, in case you did, we got the fuel cell mounted up in the back of the truck. And you can see here, I have a silver outline where I want to cut the bottom of that fuel cell out. Drop it two inches and make a sump for our fuel pump. But, that is an aluminum fuel cell. And before I wanted to weld all that together, or just get into that part, um, I got a neat little modification for, well, it's not really a modification, I guess. Or it is. <laughs> Ish, I guess. Anyways, uh, like a lot of you guys out there, I have a Vulcan TIG welder that I bought from Harbor Freight. Now, some of you may not have this one. This one is extremely hard, or they do not sell this version anymore. But they are air-cooled torches, or gas-cooled torches where their connector here feeds gas up the center to our torch assembly there. And they do not come with the option of being water cooled. Uh, I did a bunch of research on the internet and I know, um, and I've seen this question come up a lot. What fitting can we use or how would you want to go about water cooling your Vulcan welder, your TIG welder? So, I did a lot of reading, a lot of searching, and I actually found this adapter. Now, I'm going to try to put the link to where I got this. I bought this off eBay, but this is the part number for that adapter. And if you come on over here, because I've already got it hooked up to a new torch assembly, here's what it looks like underneath the uh, cover. Uh, I have the cover here somewhere, but I left it off because I wanted to make sure it does not leak water. I want to make sure everything was tight when I go to function test this. And I wanted to show you guys what it does. It's actually really, really cool. You don't have to modify your welder at all. You just need this piece. And I'll go ahead and set this right here so you can see. Where is it? There it goes. Now it'll plug directly into the factory port of our Vulcan welder. It still sends gas up the center like it normally would on our factory torch assembly. But here's where the magic happens. Inside here, it sends the gas up through. And then out, it tees off or has somewhere inside here is where it splits off and sends it out this hose here and redirects it to our new whoops, torch assembly there, which I will be using. And now the water runs out through the center like it would. Still the power port. So you got the you plug this in the machine. It sends power through all this, sends power all the way up because that's how that torch assembly functions. So it splits it all off. I've got everything tightened up. I've got everything put together. Both torch assemblies have a number 10 cup on them and the tungstens have been switched over to the exact same size. And what I wanna do is, I got a couple of pieces here of scrap aluminum that I'm going to be welding together. We're gonna to start off with my air gas cooled torch assembly. I have my little heat gun here that I will be kind of like putting on our torch assembly itself just to see how hot it gets. Now, if you're welding stainless steel or thinner pieces of aluminum and are not in long, <laughs> wish I, uh, in long points or long periods of time, then you will realize that your torch assembly does get hot, especially with aluminum because your amperage is a lot higher than it would be on stainless steel. And I've got a bunch of welds I want to do on that guy over there. Plus, I've got some inner core piping and stuff I, we're going to be jumping on this truck here pretty soon. So I want to be comfortable with doing that, but just to kind of show you guys or get uh, a comparison between the two. I haven't welded on it yet. All I did was turn this on and just check for leaks. So we're going to see what happens at the exact same time or not the exact same time, right? <laughs> on the same video. Because by the time this video comes out, a couple days will pass. So, but anyways, got Seth up here. Hey. He's been successfully dodging the camera-ish here the last few minutes, kind of 
Yeah, Weaving in and out. But <laughs> go ahead and give him the camera here. He's going to do some recording, and we're going to see how well this, this setup works. Now, this is an eBay. I got this cooling tower off of eBay. I think I'll put a link to it as well. I think I paid around just over 300 bucks for that. I want to say it's just over 100 bucks for the torch assembly itself with all the hoses and all that. And I think probably the most expensive part of the torch assembly was this. He said, I'll put a link to it. Um, definitely show you guys the part number again here before the end of the video. But I see, I want to say this was probably about 90 bucks. So you will spend a few, you know, a few dollars converting your uh, welder over to water cooled, but we're going to see how worth it it is. Or at least give you a comparison. I still, I haven't even used it yet and I still think it's totally worth it. So. But anyways, hand you off to Seth. We'll get this thing fired up and I'll start uh, welding these pieces together. Are you recording? Yeah. <laughs> All right, got everything plugged in. If you want to take a look at that there, you'll see I got 135 amps set. So that's what, the, so that'll be the amperage I'll be using while welding or welding this together, like I said. Here is the head of the torch assembly. You see, this is the one that is plugged in right now. and pull it all the way back. Boom. There you go. Top of that right there. See that? About 74, 75. Got it? Right. Cool. 76. Now. Go ahead and weld. Let's see here. Uh huh. I saved that over the side. This guy here. This little scrap piece. So I'll go ahead and stitch weld these together. And we'll take a reading on the temperature of this guy here. And then we'll switch over to the water cooled guy and. Uh, See the difference. Here we go. Cover your eyes. Uh, all right. So, for those of you that are new, for those of you that have been me or been with me since I started learning how to aluminum. Or started learning how to weld aluminum and see I have gotten considerably better with this good thing I got gloves on because that's hot <laughs> haven't necessarily gotten any smarter but now let's see how hot this little guy is here oh there we go 150 172 178 so you can see it's actually pretty freaking hot here. Let's try it down here too. There you go. 211, 210. So it is considerably hot. Now I've also, I've learned too, to kind of keep my hand far enough back. So I didn't really feel all of that, but I tend to get a little shaky. So as a matter of fact, I'm going to have, let's put a couple more, another bead probably, Right down the front here. Let's get a little bit more time on this. So, here we go. Okay. So, there's our bead we just added. You see here, we use our little temperature gun. So. 200 on that side. Let's try this side here. 205, 206. Okay. So, it is getting warm. Now, we'll go ahead and plug in our water cooled one. We're going to do it right now. We're not shutting anything off. Just going to go ahead and go through. Unplug this guy, get it out of the way. 
definitely gonna hold on to this because I mean it is a good working torch. As you guys can see there, it does fairly well, but it, it heats up. So here is our new water cool one. This guy down here. Okay, we're gonna leave the cover off right now because I just want to watch and make sure everything functions like this. Watch our hose here, come over here. You can see it shows up the water pressure, so you should watch it kick. Uh, you see it move a little bit there? Alright. So, now let's test this guy out. Something I've always wanted to do. Now, it is probably twice as long as our factory was, it's 12 and a half feet. I think that's like maybe six or seven feet. So, make sure this guy's on all the way. You can go ahead and turn that all the way up because it's regulated by up there. So, I'm excited to see how this works first time using it. Got that there. As a matter of fact, before I do anything, let's clean that edge up. Clean that up later. It's <laughs> near. So about 70 degrees so it's going to stay consistent because it actually has water running through it through it right now there you go see 69 so the water is running through it right now so let's go ahead and tackle these guys together and i'll load it up like i did on the other one and we'll double check and see our temperature Definitely gonna take some it's different settings for sure. Ooh, porous. Yeah. Let's go ahead and put some more on here. <laughs> Not pretty. Nah, it's I mean right. it's your first time using it. It's okay. It's okay definitely. I don't have to hold the pedal wide open on this torch as I do the other one. This one I can let up. The other first one is full black. Okay, right, so just burn it up. <laughs> Yeah, don't look at it. <laughs> Alright, now, I've been welding with this much, much longer as I did the first one. That is extremely hot. You see that? What is that? 560. Yeah, depending on where I'm at. Blah, 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 blah. So, now here's our torch. Oh, yeah. 109, 108, 107. 
set that there. Now I obviously have to play with my settings some more because this assembly, well, welds differently than the uh, than the uh, gas pulled one. So you guys can saw there welding with the water cooled ahead for a much longer time than I use the gas cooled one barely over 100 degrees so it's freaking awesome I didn't feel it in my hand actually the torch was really cool it didn't heat up at all uh, the other one that one just for a little bit of time I did weld with it it did heat up I could feel it through the glove a little bit but that could be because of hand placement as well. So don't take my word on that 100%. Just know that the torch assembly, just over 100 degrees, water cooled. Again, here is the part number in case I can't find the link or forget to put it in the description. That is what I used on our Vulcan Pro TIG 200. I'm almost confident it is pretty much the same size on the other welders as well so I hope this helps you guys out I obviously have to go back and play with my settings now that I have changed torch assemblies I've gotten so used to the air cooled one so or I need to clean my material a little better but hope this helps some of you guys out I know it helped me. Uh, I was kind of, I was, when I got the part in, I hooked all this up, I was excited to share it with you guys. So again, you know, not too exciting as to working on cars or anything like that. I just wanted to show you guys that I found an adapter so you can water cool your, uh, your Vulcan TIG welder. But hope this helps some of you guys out. Thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Share this with your buddy that's been looking for that part, right? Turn on notifications. Thank you guys again for hanging out. Hope you liked the video. And I'll see you on the next one.